Welcome to the new. Every experience with God's Word promises to be refreshing and transformational. Receive today's message with high expectations as it brings power, light, and a fresh anointing to your life. Amen. Glory to God. Lift it up to God. Lift it up one more time. Sing our great, our great is our God. I want to hear your voices sing. Is our God? Oh, we sing. ways to worship is to shut your eyes and lift your two hands to God. And darkness they tremble at his voice. They tremble. Aye, aye, aye. Say how good Faith is rising. One more time. One more time. One more time. Lift it up. Sing. How great, how great is our God. Are you ready? Are you ready? Kapatala mango toporo de la maya. One more time, one more time. Ah, yeah. How great, how great is our God. Name above all names. Name Let me hear you. Sing to the Lord. And my heart. One more time. Sing it out loud. Name above all names. Sing name above all names. And my heart. Wow. 
Jacob. Are you ready for the feast? It's an honor, Lord. One more time. Holy, holy, holy. the universe wow it's an honor Lord with a grateful heart proclaim your Lord Let me hear the church sing it with a grateful heart. Yes, 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 Lord. Lord, you up your heads, O ye gates, but ye lifted up ye everlasting doors, and let the King of glory come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battles, he is the King of glory. One more time, sing it, sing it. And great are you. And when the glory comes, Kapatala Bandaya. When the glory comes, oh. and when the glory comes, Lift your two hands and sing it one more time. And when the glory comes,
Out of my belly shall flow rivers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> out of this belly shall flow rivers out of my belly shall flow rivers one more time out of my belly As the river flow <laughs> it's a life-giving river oh that it flow right here right now by Aramandas Aramando Kosi Farada Banda La Kata La Manda Sakabaya Shoramando Kopala Diva La Fata Kata La Mando Kopala De La Feta Lomahaya Roman de la Cartas. If you can find your seat, just take a seat. So let's get into it right now. All right. We started out a teaching series um, when we had the feast in Lagos. Thank you. And because of time, I would not be able to go into all the things that we taught because we taught so many things. So you can go back on YouTube and watch it one after the other. Um, Today, all through today and tomorrow, I have a number of things that the Lord wants me to torture. And let me just say a few things here. The purpose of the feast, all right, it's not only for us to gather together in different installations of the new every year. The purpose is that we are schooled and taught in the things of God. Number two is for us to have congregational worship to God. Number three is that prophecies are released to prepare us ahead for a coming year. And let me teach you something about prophecies. You must understand that prophetic words don't come to excite us. The purpose of prophecy and prophetic words is solely to get us prepared ahead of what is ahead of us. But most importantly, is for us to see what is possible with God. Prophecies opens our eyes to see what is possible with God. And you see, the biggest casualty and problem sometimes is that we have so many prophetic words, but we don't remember them. And you see, if you go back to your last notebook of the Feast 2021, it's very likely that you had many things God told you, but you can't remember anymore. For many reasons. Number one, you didn't write them down. Number two, you wrote them down and you forgot them somewhere. What we do with prophecy is that we write it down 
so that we can remind ourselves of what God has said to us. And so the first thing I want to encourage you to do this feast is that every word that comes out that you know is your word, either it's a collective word for the church or either it's a word for you as a person, you must learn how to write it down and pay attention to it and give attention to it. And that way, you are able to see what God has said to you and you are able to believe him for what he has said to you. And so never forget this. At this feast, write down every prophetic word that comes out. Did you get something there? The Lord told me to say that specifically for people. Write down every word that has come out so that you can be empowered and equipped for the coming year 2023. Did you hear what I said there? Would you do that? Are you sure? Yes, Glory to God. And so, this is the foundation, this is the basis upon which we have the feast, whereby we are able to then build upon that. And so in the coming year, 2023, we have a perspective. We know exactly what God wants to do with our lives, and we have prophecies that has gone ahead of us. Let me tell you something. Never joke with prophecies in your life. They are too powerful to always come to pass. In fact, never joke with any word that comes out from God's mouth. Because if God said it, then he's going to do it. Are you hearing me? So are you ready for the feast now? Are you ready now? Can we dive into it? Are you sure? Glory to God. There is hunger in this house. I'm happy. There's hunger. Glory to God. When I landed yesterday as I was driving in, as we're driving in, the Lord opened my eyes in a vision and I saw a landed property for Akure. Listen, if you've worked with me and this ministry for a while, you understand the seal of approval. That whatever God says, it does. I don't just speak casually. I only say as commanded. The Lord said that he's given us a land. And before the feast next year, it will be handed over to us. Believe this by the spirit of prophecy. A land. Because the gathering of young people in this city with the new is one a lot of people have been talking about. How come? But the Lord said, we haven't even seen anything. The Lord said, he's putting an anointing upon you that we command the obedience of the faith. Which means that people would rally, they would galvanize to see a vision come to pass. And there's going to be a compelling force in your words from today. The Bible says, my people shall be willing in the days of thy power. A scepter of power that commands authority and influence in this city and beyond. The Lord says it's given to you. And so I see a flooding of thousands of people, young people, working professionals, masters, orders, and people will say, just as Noah built the ark, I want to play my part in this building. I want to build. And I see people coming together, dropping their skill set. I see Bezahel and Oliabs, people who are anointed with craftsmanship to gather together to build for God. Thank you, Jesus. That is done already. Thank you. That is done already. Can we celebrate the Lord for that word? Thank you, Jesus. Wow. I'm literally seeing it. Can you see? Can you see? 
Can you see the land I'm talking about? <laughs> Woo! We must put a discipleship tent in that place where we can build men with divine curriculums to take the earth. So we are not just going to be playing church. The scroll has been opened. Thank you, Jesus. Can you rejoice in that world? Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Can you, am I, am I in the new? The second thing the Lord told me was as I was getting on the plane, um, I think we were flying already and I looked at Pastor Ladi and I said, the Lord just told me now that the new as a church that yesterday marks the end of an era and a new era started yesterday. Now, you might not understand what I'm talking about. I tell you with all humility to God in four years, in four years of this assignment, I've seen the hand of God. It's unbelievable what God has done in four years. But the Lord says in the fifth year, He says He's going to make the whole four year look like a child's play. He says that what would happen in, four, in the fifth year would be a combination of all that happened in four years. He says, I've put speed on your feet and grace upon your head. It says, run and take territories for me. It says, an alarm has gone out. A sound has let loose. And a new thing has begun. Do you believe that word? To see you highly tied up. about faith are you ready all right the title of my teaching this session it's in two parts all right the first part I will teach on some foundational principles of faith and then the second part I will continue and then the last part will have some time for miracles impartation and the flow of the Holy Spirit are you ready for that? Yes, Glory be to God. Amen. 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 So let's start out with Hebrews chapter 2. I'm sure we all have a writing materials and we're ready to learn. Hebrews chapter 2. And let's start 
Um, let's start, no, not Hebrews. Let's start with Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 4. Let's, let's start with Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 4. Glory be to God. Habakkuk 2 verse 4. We're going to read it together. Everyone, one, two, ready and read. Oh, now I know people who come to church without their Bibles. It's not on the screen yet. Open your Bible. This is our own camp meeting. And we do this from one installation to another. And it's just a time to sit down to learn. Glory be to God. Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 4. Now, are you ready? Abakuku chapter 2. Abakuku chapter 2 and verse 4. Are we ready? Yeah. It's not on the screen yet, so can I come down, media? Are you media? Can I come down? You're yeah, not media. No, 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 don't bring this down. Don't worry. I just want to know if I can come down. I'm good? All right, thank you. Abakuk chapter 2 and verse 4. Let's read together, everyone. One, two, ready and read. Just imagine for a moment if we were a choir and we just did this now and we went for an audition. Would we pass? So let's do it together. <laughs> One, two, ready and read. What would the just leave by? Galatians chapter 3 and verse 11. Galatians 3 and 11. Glory to God. Galatians 3, 11. One, are you there? Shall I wait for you? Are you there? Are you there? Online viewers, are you there? Wow, you know, the Lord told me that this feast is going to be a feast of light. The amount of time Jesus... All right, different commentaries so you can see different things. The amount of time Jesus used the word faith in the Bible was 150 something times in the Bible. I should tell you that faith is important. And so we then goes on further, Apostle Paul then goes on further in the book of Galatians to say, the just man shall live by faith. And so what he's trying to say there is that the qualification of your justification is great, but if you are going to tap things from this realm, you are going to need the net called faith. And so there are believers who are celebrating their justification and that's all they get from heaven. But they would never tap the possibilities on this other side because their faith net was not let loose. This is why you see a believer who prays, who fasts, but no earthly manifestation. Are you getting what I'm talking about? This is why you see a believer who does everything but no earthly manifestation because your justification is great. It is great to God. It is great for yourself. But you need the key card, the net of faith. The just shall live by faith. So if he needs anything, he needs to let loose his faith in order to draw from the bank of the heavens. Glory be to God. So I want you to think about this every time. In the Amen. So as Pastor Victor is here right now, if he needs, um, what's that thing? What do you need? Okay, okay. We've done sign language, so we understand it. If he needs, all he needs to do <laughs> why are you laughing <laughs> all he needs to do is to release his faith all right to get it but here's the thing we make faith look so hard that people think that i just don't have this faith so i'm going to prove to you this morning 
that you have that faith to change the world. The just shall live by faith. So, let me give you some definitions about faith. Thank you. Number one, this is, this is what I'm going to use to build my foundation on some of the things I want to share with you today. Number one, I said this in the Kedja, and I want to reiterate it again so that you can write it down and it would help you understand what we are talking about here. Number one, faith is that force. Faith is that force that invades the invisible world and commandeers the enforcement of your earthly desires in agreement to the will of God. Let me say it again. Faith is that force that invades the invisible world that commandeers the enforcement of your earthly desires in agreement to the will of God. You see, when God gave me this text, it blew my mind. When he, when he gave me this word as a definition of faith, I'm like, whoa. Faith is a force. Number two, which is where I want to point on. Faith is a consciousness of an all-powerful personality who is able to do the impossible. Faith is a consciousness of an all-powerful personality who is able, somebody say God is able, to do the impossible. So let's give an example. Pastor Victor, please come again. Because this is the mind you must have to anchor your faith on. Please stay there. That the person who you are serving is able. That's the mind. That's the mind of faith. That the God you are speaking to, the God you are asking these things from, is actually able to do it for you. He has the capacity. He has the wherewithal. He has the power. He has the ability. He has everything it takes to be able to deliver what you are believing from. You see, when this thing sticks to your mind, you'll be able to believe God for anything. Because you see, the reason why many of us don't believe God for big things is because we don't think God is able to do it. Or, we think that he's able to do it, but you just don't think he's able to do it for you. That's the problem. So let me ask a question here. I have this wristwatch in my hands. And Pastor Victor is over there. And Pastor Victor, just assume I'm Pastor Victor's dad. Alright? And I have PV there. And it needs um, um, a wristwatch. So, Pastor Victor says to me, all right, let me get another mic. Let's, let me, let's act this out. Because I want to I want to teach this as simple as possible so that you can understand this. Amen. Amen. Do you have a girlfriend? I'm not shaking you, you know. Thank you. <laughs> so, PV, you, you, you ask me. Ask me anything that I have around me. All right? Don't go and ask me for my air. Don't just... So, just watch. All right. All right, let's go. One, two, three, go. It's mic. I need this mic to work. Okay, you need to turn it on. Amen. All right. That is, I need your wristwatch. So he needs my wristwatch, right? Do I have a wristwatch? Am I able to give him that wristwatch? Is he a big deal for me? Is it too much for me to do? Think about it. So, if he needs a wristwatch from me, what do I do? I pull it out and I give him my wristwatch. Why? Because I have it and I can give it. All right. Thank you, sir. What else do you need from me? Use your, use your church mind, though. All right. What else do you need from me? That I love your gold pen, sir. I need it, sir. He needs my pen. Do I have it? Am I able to give it to him? Is he in my capacity to give it? Do I have to go borrow a pen? Do I have to go and ask another God, please? My son needs cow. Do I have to? Is it in my capacity? Can I do it? All right. Thank you, sir. What else do you need from me? 
double portion of the anointing. This guy in a big mouth. Wait, wait, wait. Let's talk about things we can see here. What else do you need from me? That I need your Bible, sir. You need my Bible. Do I have it? Yes, sir. Can I give it? Yes, sir. All right. Can I give it? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Sir. One more thing. Ask me another thing. That your hanky, sir. Do I have my handkerchief with me? Now, have you noticed that everything is asked of me has been made ready? So when we say you are coming for the feasts, all things are ready. He's not asking me something and I'm saying, I'm coming, let me just go and make it. Let me go and get it ready. It's ready. It's right there. I'm just waiting for him to ask me. So I'm not saying, wait, wait, wait. I need to make, I hope you know there are body parts in heaven. Listen, boys, girls, I hope you know there are spare parts bodies in heaven. That's why people are going to get healed here today. So I'm not saying, wait a minute. You know, oh, you're asking too much. So he asked for Anki. All right, come have it. Thank you, sir. Why? Because I have the capacity. So whenever you read the scripture that says, the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. The words and day. Listen. When the Bible says the words and day, it was not only talking about human beings. It was talking about gold, silver, diamond. Because they are day. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? Now, does your God have the capacity? Is he able? Can he do it? Is his hand too short that he can't reach you? Does he need to go and meet Beelzebub or Dagon to ask him for help? Guess what? Does he even need to consult anybody to help? You see that anything you want, you can what? <laughs> That's the concept of faith. Because he has everything. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, guess what? Who's blessed now? He or me? Now, let me ask a question. When he called me, what did he say? He said, Dad. Yes or no? Let me ask a question. Who is happy that he has it? He says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Ah, my goodness. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. So, your worship is great. Your giving is great. But everything must be done by faith. What excites him is faith. Meaning that when we say, Lord, I want to please you, what you are actually saying is, Lord, I want to walk the full steps of faith. Are you getting what I'm talking about here? I want to walk the full steps of faith. It's as simple as it is. So faith is believing in the capacity of a God who is able. That's why my favorite scripture in the Bible, when I was on campus in part two, I will never forget it. About Femi Aula University, I read that scripture in part two. Ephesians 3.20 Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly far glory to God. Hallelujah. You see, that scripture in itself is, is tautology. It doesn't even make sense because why you say exceedingly, abundantly, far, it means the writer of the text, which was Paul, didn't find the right word to use to frame it. I love I can't remember what, what um, version of the Bible puts it this way. I read it many, many, many years ago. It says, can you even dare to imagine it? Is able to do more than what you just imagined. Yeah. Think about it. Can you even dare imagine? That's the way the text was written. Well, God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, far above. You see, I said something at the feast last on, on, on Sunday. I said, God said to me while I was preaching, God said, please, 
Use me well. What you are asking for, I don't, I don't need, I don't need to, I don't need to, I don't need to stretch out my hand on that one. Listen, some of us, what we are asking for, man can do it for us. The concept of faith is daring God for what man cannot do. The moment man can do it, you are still playing in the realms of hope. You are still playing in the realms of your own possibility. You can scheme it together and make it happen. But when you know that you cannot, meaning that you have to rest solely on his possibilities, then that's faith. And guess what God says? He says, then you are pleasing me. Now that, that should mean something to us. That should mean something to us. That should place a demand on us as Christians that you see, our father is so rich, he's so blessed, he has everything. Cattle upon a thousand hills, the hertz is his own, the ground is his own, the diamonds are his, the silver, everything. Humans are his. Amen. Amen. He says the arts of kings are in the hands of God. He can turn them with whatever direction that he pleases him. Everything is his own. But you see, the problem is this. The real problems of Christian is that we serve a God, we don't believe in his possibility, but we declare his possibility. That's why when Jesus got to the tomb of Lazarus, Jesus says, if thou would have believed, thou should have seen the glory. He says, only believe. The big problem of believers, which is a problem to our name, because the reason why we are called believers is because we believe. We are not called believers or, you know, just to say, oh, this one. It means we believe in the possibility of a God that died and finished everything. That's why we're called believers. Glory to God. Oh boy, I'm telling you something. In the year 2021, 2022, oh boy, I used my faith. My good God. Oh. And you know the thing about faith? Faith is renewed by the reason of use. Oh my God. In physics, we call it elastic limit. It means that when you are stretched to a point, it never regains its size. So when you have dared God for a certain level of things before, you never go back there again. Are you getting what I'm talking about? Listen, there are some things I've passed in my work with faith. I've passed it. Because I've passed it. That's how it works. A lot, the more you use your faith, the more it expands. The more you can do big things with it. The more you can dare more things with it. The more you can go bigger with it. You have to keep using. Some of us, our faith is dumb and doing nothing. We're not using it. It's just there. Use your faith. Oh, yes. Use your faith at the net to draw from the realms of the unseen to the seen realm. That's what faith does. Faith is the ability to see into the realms of the unseen and pull it into the seen realm. Faith is the ability to see into the realms of the unseen and pull it into the seen realm. If it's in the seen realm, it's not faith. But it's even your unseen realm, meaning that there is a possibility you can see with your spiritual eyes, or it's written in the word, and you can see that it is possible, then you can pull it over to the sin realm. There is really a realm called the realms of the spirit. The realm of the spirit, either you know it or not, is not the sky. The realms of the spirit is a geographical location called the spiritual, which you operate in as a spirit. Oh, did you hear what I said? The moment you are a human being, you don't exempt from self from the realms of the spirit. You can't exempt yourself. You can't say, no, no, no. Man is a spirit. He has a soul and he lives in a body. You are primarily a spirit. God communicates with your spirit. And in that realm called the realms of the spirit, there are activities of God in that realm and there are activities of the devil. That is why in the realm of the spirit, there are no secrets. Oh my goodness. Can I go a little bit deeper? In the realms of the spirit, there are no secrets. Everything is bare. Everything is bare. That's why when we begin to flow in the gift of the Spirit in Ephesians, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, I can come to him and I'm talking and I know things by word of wisdom or word of knowledge about his life. Because in that realm, there is no secret. You can't hide things from me. That's why you can enter into a meeting with an occultic person and they can, they can scan you. Even Jesus, they knew his location. Did you know what I just said now? There is no secret. Everything is bare. So, you can keep things from man, but when man can touch the realm, 
they can see things in the spirit realm because there are no secrets there and in that place is where you know your script written for you and once your script is there it is there the devil knows it and a empowered spirit can download it and your faith can bring it to pass oh. I'm telling you the truth I'm telling you the truth that's why occultic people and evil people and that's not I don't have time talking about those kind of people one of the things they do is that you meet people sometimes and this happened to you before you met someone and just by meeting the person you didn't have any conversation but you just repelled the person for no reason has that happened to you before someone you said oh I think I'm gonna be close to this person and all of a sudden you just feel like oh no no, no I shouldn't be you know why because something in the realms of the spirit there was a communication and you could just tell because in that place everything is laid bare everything is laid bare look at what John said when he saw Jesus he says behold the lamp of God I hope you know that that conversation there was a decorative expression it wasn't that God or Jesus was a lamp it wasn't like Jesus was the lamp we just use those words amen but I don't want to go in that a lamb that was slain before the foundation of the earth. How did John the Baptist know? He went to a pool, decided to baptize people. It was his own strategy to be able to spotlight Jesus. And the moment he saw him, who told him? The realms of the spirit. That's why I said it does not take time, it takes light. There is too much light in the realms of the spirit. This is why you must understand, the first thing God created after I created the heavens and the earth was let there be what? Light is important. This is why Paul prayed that the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ will give unto me the spirit of wisdom and what? Revelation in the knowledge of him. That what? Light. Jesus speaking in a place, he said, those who sat in great darkness, behold, I've seen a great light. 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 Tomorrow I'm going to be teaching you how the Holy Ghost empowers your faith. Because your faith is not a standalone from the Holy Ghost. It's actually the Holy Ghost that empowers your faith. Because to walk in faith, you must actually see what others can see. And the person that can show you what others cannot see is the Holy Ghost. So sometimes what we call faith is really the prompting of the Holy Ghost. Oh my goodness. Sit down. Pierre, please let me know when it's 20 minutes. All right, 20 minutes, yes. And so you see, PV there has been able to pull out from me. Now guess what? God in himself replenishes himself. Let me explain what that means. When you see certain things in the Bible, and when we use words in the Bible like water, like fire, like wind, like storm, and those sort of things to use to explain God. It's sort of like a type and shadow, but not the exact explanation of who God is. It's just that we are trying to use something in our own human capacity to be able to explain God. You see, this is why when Moses said to God, I want to see you, God said, with your own on, you created human spirit you can see me because if you see me face to face now think about this for a moment think about this what God was saying was that your IOS will crash it will crash because you see when you say you want to see God it means that in the cosmos or the earthly realm you are talking about you want to see put together in a person you want to see the skies the beauty of the skies you want to see the birds. You want to see the seas, the foundations of the earth. You want to see the animals. You want to see the stars. Amen. You want to see, what else? You want to see the mountains. Have you ever traveled before? You see the beauty of the mountains? You want to see fountains. One blowing red hot here, another one blowing cold at the same time. You want to see man. You want to see the reproductive organ of humans, of man. You want to understand how man breathes. You want to understand the concept of conception. You understand, you want to understand all of these things put together in one moment? 
You want to see me? Do you know what it means to see me? Ha! Ah, Moses, don't dare it. See my signs. You can really see me. Moses insisted. Do you see what faith does? Faith compels God. Even what God would not want to do, if your faith says yes, God can say no. If your faith says yes, God can say no. According to the will of God. God says, okay, I'm just going to show you my back. Because if you see me at once, in a glance, your brain will burst. You can't. There are 7 billion people on the face of the earth. It is night time somewhere in Russia or somewhere in, um, in um, Australia. It is daytime somewhere here in Nigeria. It's talking about the beauty of our God. It's talking about the fountains. We're not even talking about what is happening in the heavens of heavens. We're not even talking about what is happening yet in Pluto, in Mars, in Jupiter. And all of these things in his hands. So you say, you want to see me? He says, no, 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 don't, don't, let, don't let's go there. Just see my back. And Moses saw his back. This is the same God that now came to our dispensation and put the entirety of that himself into you. Ayala la mangata. He put the entirety, what he told the prophets of old, the patriarchs of old, that they could not touch, is now what he embedded inside you. Then the angel says, who is man that you are mindful of him? Who is man? Glory to God. Do you see that when these things are made known to you, you are more powerful than you think? Do you really know who you are? Listen, my guys and girls in this place, I don't know why I keep saying my guys are girls. But listen, ladies and gentlemen, does that sound better? What the devil doesn't want you to know is who you are. If you know who you are, the possibilities of God becomes your possibilities. I said to you the other day, we must learn how to start, stop getting flabbergasted, bewildered, marooned by the patriarchs of old. We must learn how to stop getting all, oh wow, look at what they did. They parted the Red Sea. Look at what they did. Do you know what Jesus says? He says, this sign shall follow them that believe in my name. In my name. He says, greater works shall you do. This is why we have cloud of witnesses. Because they want to see what they did as child's play to what we are doing. That's why we have cloud of witnesses. That's why they are cheering us on. For we do not have a great cloud of witnesses. They are cheering us on. They are saying, come on, Bola. You can tear down the mountain. You Come on, sister. You can do this. Come on, brother. You can do this. Why? Because they want to see. Because the best of God is never in the past. The best thing God did was never to part of the Red Sea. The best thing God did is the possibilities of your life. Stop getting flabbergasted by the Red Sea. Oh, by the walls of Jericho falling down. Those things are great. But the greater than Solomon is here. The greater than the patriarchs are here. Are you hear what I'm talking about? And so if we're writing the hallmark of fame, of faith, in Hebrews chapter 11 to the end, then your name should be there. Oh yes. It mustn't stop with Solomon. It mustn't stop with David. It mustn't stop with Daniel. It mustn't stop with um, Deborah. Your name should be there. The cloud of witnesses must be looking, oh boy. It's just, like, it's just like King David just runs to meet Elijah, cloud of witnesses, WhatsApp group. <laughs> Do you know they have a WhatsApp group? Someone say, oh, is, is that true? Just imagine they have a WhatsApp group, the cloud of witnesses, WhatsApp group. Moses is there, David is there, Goliath is not there. Who else is there? Deborah is there. Who else is there? Daniel is there, Barak is there, Sam Jephthah, all of the cloud of witnesses, WhatsApp group. Then all of a sudden, Pastor Victor says, in the heart of Lagos, I'm going to buy a studio owned by these pagan kings, and I'm going to convert it for God. Then David is sleeping, then he hears that town on his WhatsApp group. Then he just sends a message, he just sees notification, Pastor Victor, Nigeria, and sees the faith action. Then he sends a message on the WhatsApp group. Oh boy, wake up, wake up, wake up. Hey, 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 wake up, wake up. And then Elijah, you too, they sleep. Wake up. Can you, can you see, can you just see Victor? Can you see what Victor is about to do? Then they say, Jephthah says, wait, 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 wait. It's a lie. He said, no, 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 no. Then, 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 um, who's that guy that stopped them? Joshua. He says, look at what they're about to do. They're sending a WhatsApp on the general WhatsApp group. And then, Jesus says, 
you had a portion of the anointing upon you but they have it in on them and in them so on the whatsapp group Jesus is saying I told you I told you I told you I told you that if I come and be lifted up I will draw all men so Jesus is telling them that well you guys did well you know why you did well because you went ahead of me to talk about my coming but when I went I finished everything then I sent to them the governor of the universe the Holy Ghost Aros Palakletos I told you that the moment I said it is finished I gave them all power listen the patriarchs of old never had all power because Christ hasn't, been, hasn't died there and was not crucified they didn't have all power no, no, they have portions of power allocated to them. That is why when Samson had the anointing and his behavior the anointing and his hair was cut off, he could only beg for that anointing to come back one more time. He didn't have all power. But Peter's shadow could heal the sick. All power. And says when God says you have all power, then you have all power. He wasn't trying to cajole you that you have all power. He actually meant that you have all power. Someone shout, I have all power. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Do you want to rejoice on that? on the whatsapp group just says see how these guys they set leg for us sha. they just they make everything we will do be like child's play and then he that sits in heaven shall laugh he says I told you I told you but you see in heaven if you're not doing anything on the whatsapp group they are saying what's, what's going on what's going on with these boys aren't you doing something Mount of Transfiguration, Elijah and Moses showed up to Jesus. Peter wanted to quickly build tent. It was the law and the prophets. It was a conversation between three: the law, the prophet, and grace. It was a conversation. It was an ending of an era of the law and the prophet coming together as grace. The law came by Moses, grace and truth came by Jesus. And what that did was that the possibilities of man will no longer be by what they do. It will now be by the empowerment of grace. So the concept of faith really is that faith is backed up by grace. So when we say we are saying I'm going but it's grace that is pushing me. <laughs> Please come. Let me show you an example. Come here. Just go this way. No, no, come, come. You, have to, you want to enter things quickly. He say, so imagine this guy. He's going to that place to take a territory for God. And this is grace. Grace is all that God has done. The favor of God, unmerited. So you are going. I don't even want you to see it as this example, like grace is pushing him. Keep going. Just imagine this is grace. And it's following him. Now, let me ask a question. Let me ask a question. Wait there. Face there. Kelechi, please come and stay here. Stay there. Imagine Kels is the gatekeeper. And he sees grace. Who is grace? Not the crucified Jesus. Not the Jesus that walked the Sea of Galilee. The glorified Jesus. The one who out of his mouth were two edges sword. The one whose brightness was like the sun. The glorified Jesus, whose eyes were like flames of fire. Let me ask a question. Who does Kelechi respect? Grace. This one here or this one? Grace. Is it him? No, when he gets before the door, why does he open it up? Grace. Now, let me ask a question. What did Kelechi do? Kelechi only acted on the response of grace. So faith is acting on what grace has said and allow grace open it up 
So faith is not what you did, it's what grace did. That's why we must not boast on our faith. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? We can't boast on our faith because it was grace that did it for us. Glory to God. So when the gates are wide open, it, it's not him that opened it. It's grace. When the Bible says, and God willed the earth to Abraham, God willed the earth. Do you know what it means for God to will heads? Even the first creature he made, a man, Adam, he didn't will it to man, Adam. He willed, he made Abraham the heirs of the earth. You know why? Because the footsteps of Abraham, the Bible says, and Abraham considered not his own body. He considered not. It means he didn't even look, he didn't look at his body as weak. He didn't see that himself, that he's tired or he can never give birth again. No, he considered not his own body. Glory to God. Giving thanks to God. For he that has said it is able. He considered not his own body. That's what Abraham did. The highest point of faith is your obedience to the will of God. Your obedience to what God says. The moment you obey what God has told you, you compel grace to follow you through the process. Write that down. The moment you obey what God has told you, you compel grace to follow you through the process. Oh, wow. Glory to God. Somebody got something there. Shout it very loud. I have faith. Do you see why that sickness cannot go back to your room with you today? You see why it can't go back home with you again today? Business owners, you see why that business is going to go to another level? You see why we're going to plant new churches? You see why we're going to buy up new houses? I sense in my spirit that some people's faith is boiling right now. Do you feel some holy anger? Do you feel some holy anger? Who are down great mountain before the Lord? <laughs> so let me show you something. Sit down and I'll close with this one. Thank you, sir. No, no, stay with me. You're still with me. So in Job chapter 37, Job, on this very faithful day, glory to God. As someone here, your mom just got healed right now. Thank you, Lord. That, that condition, after the break, go and make that call. I tell you, it just, I saw at our strange harm of God just take that thing away and yank it out. Your mom just got healed right now. So on this very faithful day, thank you, Jesus. God decided to have a conversation with Job. So let me have two chairs. Are you learning something? Are you getting something? Two chairs. Sit here. Can I, if I can have this away. Job 37. Let me, let's, let's see to start from verse 1. Give, give me my Bible. It's a long text. So let me see if we can skip some of those texts. Because I told you that faith is believing in what? The possibilities of a personality that is able to do it. Do you believe that he's able to do it? Yeah. And do you believe he's going to start with you? Yeah. That's one of the things I'm going to teach first. I'm going to teach maybe to, um, to later today or maybe tomorrow on how you must know that God prioritizes you before himself. That should sink in. Let us sink, sink in. And he prioritizes you before another. If that sinks to your soul and your spirit, you would always come before the Lord boldly. You see, this is the posture I go to before God when I pray. Have you noticed this? Have you asked yourself this question? 
that most times when Jesus was praying, he's always adding, Father, I thank you because you always hear me. Why does he say that? Have you thought about it? Father, I thank you. I mean, he's one with God. Why do you keep saying that, Father, I thank you because you always hear me? Because it's an assurance to himself and to his faith that the moment he says, Father, it's like, just imagine, that's not what it is. So I'm just giving an example. It's like God was pressing computer. And then the moment he hears the voice of Jesus, just drop the computer and say, hey, what do you want? That must be what's on your mind. Every time you say, Father, it's like, what do you want? You know, sometimes just play with God. Father, what do you want? And just keep playing. Listen, it's only your earthly father that goes back to the laptop. Your heavenly father stays. Talk to me. Talk to me. Boy, oh boy. Talk to me. Talk to me. Talk to me. Talk to me. So when he says, a thousand of the casualties are his, the earth, then you ask God for, think about it, you ask God for a husband. And the heart of king are in his hands. And you now think you'll be unmarried. Is that not an abnormality to the possibilities of your God? Think about it. No, 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 just think about it for a moment. When I say I commandeer, it's because I know who I'm talking to. He knows my name, he knows my voice, and he hears my roar. I command, when I speak, they listen. I'm telling you the truth. They listen, they listen. Jesus says, Father, I thank you because you always, not sometimes. It must be a consciousness. What you are not conscious about, you jump into and you will fail willfully. The things of the spirit in this kingdom works by consciousness. It works mostly by understanding. You must understand these things. You must understand these things. That's why in the first Peter, um, I think it's chapter 2, it says we must grow in grace and in the knowledge of Christ. We must grow in grace. We must grow in grace and what? In the knowledge. So it means that grace increases once knowledge increases. Yeah. When you're knowledgeable about certain things, your grace in that area increases. Yes or no? If you understand Forex, grace in that area, you are able to do it. You are able to apply it. What you understand helps you increase. This is why we learn our Christian doctrines. This is why we take doctrinal thoughts and matters important so that we are not tossed to and fro by any wings of doctrine. Because the more we do that, the more we grow in grace in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. The more we know the possibilities of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the more we are able to exercise our rights in Christ Jesus. Listen. Many years ago, the Lord told me this. I wanted to write this down. He said, everything I created, I created for your pleasure. He said, everything I created, I created for you. Wow. If you didn't hear anything at this feast, if you heard that alone and ran with it, it should bless you. Everything I created. So, Job... Is somebody getting blessed? Yes, sir. Are you eating well? Yes, sir. Do you want some dessert? Yes, sir. Or you are still on the main course? Yes, sir. Still on the main course? Should we keep going? Yes, sir. Someone say, my faith is stirred. My faith is stirred. So in Job chapter, because what I'm trying to do this morning is to help us understand who God is. In Job chapter 37, I want to see if I can just move some things over. Um, anyway, let me move this away. In Job 37, please sit down. This is Job. Sit down. Just imagine, Pastor Victor, just keep complaining. Just complain. <laughs> I need sound here, please. Hallelujah. I'm going to this up now. Everywhere just red, nothing still. I don't tire. I'm, I'm actually very tired. How, how, where I want to start from now? I 
give offering. No fruit. I pay tight. No increase. I start business. It shut down after two months. I told babe, she give me breakfast. <laughs> how? How shall these things be? God, how far? God, I beg. God, I beg. <laughs> God, I beg. How Corona? How? I don't even beg. I don't beg again. I don't. I don't verse. How? How? You see me, Kasi. I've served faithfully all my life. You see, if I serve, you will bless my bread and butter, and take sickness far from me. Now, sickness, it boil all my body. Now, 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 watch this. This is Job talking. And. Job chapter 38. This, this is the prototype of our lives. So God shows up in a coffee table conversation with Job. And when God comes, God did not say, Job, why are you the talk? I don't get power again, no. Then we don't carry everything. When God showed up, he started to boast in his possibilities. But not only was he boasting, he started to question Job. So Job 31, 38, let's start from verse 1. If we can put, can we get the scriptures on the screen? I want to see media. Is it possible? It's on the screen. All right, I'll watch this one. Because we are talking about the foundation of our faith, which is that God is able. If you're looking for a topic of this teaching this morning, is what God is able. That's, what, that's, that's the foundation of faith. That you are serving a personality that is powerful and able to do anything. Somebody shout, all things are possible. So you must, you must anchor your faith on that first. Once you are able to anchor your faith on that, you will come boldly for anything and dare anything. Because you know he's able. In fact, sometimes you'll be praying to God say, okay, you know what, give me a I know say you feed one. You know what, give me a Okay, no bala. <laughs> boy, oh boy. Because he's able. So, so God shows up to Job and started to ask Job a question. Verse 1, it says, Then the Lord answered Job out of the wild wind and said, Next verse, Who is this that darkest? No, no, give me the new King James. Thou, thou it, thou it, knowest. O mini, knowest. No, let's do new King James. <laughs> it says, Who is this who darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Next verse. Now prepare yourself like a man, oh. Prepare yourself. I will question you and you shall answer me. Now, the moment God puts you in the courtyard of question and answer, what did he say? He no go favor you. <laughs> he now starts, he says, were you there when I laid the foundations of the earth? Tell me. If you have understanding, tell me. Talk to me. Uh, Excuse her. Excuse her. <laughs> <laughs> Let us sit and face each other. This is no turn your chair well. Don't let this let this mark your mind for life. Thank you, Jesus. So he says, Were you there when I laid the foundations? Tell me if you have understanding. No. Next verse. Who determines the measurements of the foundation? Surely you know now. You know. Or who stretches the line upon it? Who gives the borders that you see can never come to the earth ground here? And the skies must never fall down to the earth. No, you tell me. Were you there? Next verse. To what were its foundation fastened? Or who laid its cornerstone? Talk to me. Next verse. When the morning stars sang together 
And all the sons of God shouted for joy. The sons of God. I don't want to go into that. It will distract me. The next verse. Verse 8. Media, media, please. All right. It says, Who shot in the seas with doors when it burst forth and issued from the womb? Next verse. When I made the cloud his garment and thick darkness is sadly bound. Next verse. When I fixed my limits for it and set bars and doors. Next verse. When I said, This far you may come, but no farther. And yet your proud waves must stop. It says, Have you commanded your morning? Since the day you began. Do you know what it, this scripture, what it was saying there? Was that, do you know what it means to say, now let the day break. And now let night come. Do you know what it means to command morning? Have you, ay, 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 ay. Kaparamandas. Wow. And when the glory comes, there will be no words to say. Let's worship God here. And when the glory comes, there will be no words to say. to say back there so God says you will answer me give me the scripture great man the Lord just told me now that he's giving you a song from this feast and it's going to stir a roar in this generation to do the impossible. It says it's giving, it's giving you a sound as of a marching order. It says the sound as of a marching order. And it's going to cover the earth. It says that everyone who hears that sound would rise and be. Thank you, Jesus. It says it's like a, a commandeering sound, a mashal, a sound of a mashal, that mashals and champions a movement of God. Father, we give you praise for that. Let's go back. It says, have you commanded the morning since your days began? And cause the dawn to know its place. Next verse. That it may take hold of the ends of the earth. And the wicked shall be shaken out of it. Next verse. It says it takes on form like clay under a seal. And stands out like a garment. Next verse. From the wicked their light is upheld. And the unpraised arm is broken. 
have you entered the spring of the sea do you know what it means for the spring of the sea the depth of the sea you know scientists say that you can never know the end of a sea it says you have you gotten there before it was trying to say i've been there i created it or have you walked in the search of depths next verse it says have the gates of death been revealed to you <laughs> there is a gate of death it says has it been revealed to you it means that if there is a gate of death he owes the key of those who enters and who cannot enter you will not enter I will not enter It says, have you seen the doors of the shadow of death? Next verse. Thank you, Jesus. It says, have you comprehended the breadth of the earth? Tell me if you know all this. It says, where is the way to the dwellings of light? You know, I told you that God is light. That when we get to heaven, listen, let me teach you something. When we get to heaven, let me tell you something. I know we said, oh, we're going to have mountain, um, mansions. And we're going to have mansions. And oh, it's going to be like a mansion party. A block party in heaven. And say, you know, go come my mansion. You go come my mansion. I go invite you. I go give you VIP tickets. I will buy table in the block party of heaven. And then all of a sudden, this is what many of us were thinking. It's a, it feels like when we get to heaven, you're going to see Pastor Victor. He will say, Victor! My pastor, wow, so good to see you. Oh, Faiz, a jolly good fella. Faiz, that's what many of us think that's going to happen. When we get to heaven, we'll be organized. Oh, now you be this. Wow, oh, wow. That sickness don't come out. Oh, wow, that accident, not, not for you, not now. You know, you're just looking. Oh, wow, so good to see you. Oh, my dad, dad, you are doing well. Oh, my baby, we call start. Wow. That's what many of us think that's going to happen. No. No. In heaven, we will be as lights. We're going to be lights like Christ. So you're not going to need any introduction. Light will recognize light. But the great light will be Christ. Oh, that will shine forth. And there will be a convergence of lights. I'll teach you that one. You see, this year, Pastor Debbie is not here. We are going to take some things, eschatology and the second coming of Christ. We are going to teach it as a church. This coming 2023, you will be pregnant of the word. You will be able, our goal in 2023 as a church is to ensure that every single individual of this church can defend the faith. Every single individual can defend the faith. You can dissect and defend faith doctrinally. Let me run because of time. Oh wow. Uh, I just had a song in my heart. Jesus. Jesus, my love. I want to bless you.
I need to close now. Please sit down. Yes, yes, my darling. Let's close with that scripture quickly.
I see Jesus seated upon the throne. I see his angels ascending everywhere. I see the Spirit fixing things again. Hallelujah. I see Jesus seated on the throne. I see his angels ascending everywhere. I see the Spirit fixing things up. And I see the Spirit mending hearts again. Hallelujah to the Lamb upon the throne. For you are the fire. And I am the sacrifice over all my soul. Ascending everywhere, and we see the spirit fixing things again. Hallelujah to the Lamb upon the throne. To the Lamb upon the throne. Hallelujah 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 to the Lamb upon the throne. Rata kapala tili kapala dali atana. Ereshete kele mandala bana kele di bayati. And the Capananda, the Kisula Palia Talabat. just we can just move in in the Holy Ghost this way everyone just wait on him just be still and just wait on him just be still and wait on him we must learn how to practice that ministering to the Lord and just learn how to practice staying on him waiting on him. Just stay right there. He says, I will stand upon my watch and I will see what he will say to me. And sometimes, just stand upon that watch and just stay on him. And sometimes it gives you a new sound. It drops a word in your spirit. Because when Jesus comes, 
He comes to always do exceedingly abundantly and far above. Wow, the Lord just showed me the second session is going to be something else. It's just going to be a flow meeting. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. You can take your posture if you want to sit down. You can sit down. Let's continue this. Let's close this up now. Let's close this up. It's okay. Please leave them. Let them flow in the Holy Ghost. Don't disturb them. They are not disturbing us. It's, it's Jesus when he walks in. He's it's always been in the meeting all along, but the manifest presence. We begin to see different things happen like we're going to see this evening. Just stay with him. Stay there. Sometimes just sit down on the floor, on your knees. Just take any posture, you know. Jesus. I, I need to run. Where is the way to the dwelling of light and darkness? Where is its place? Next verse. That you may take to it its territory, that you may know the path to its own. Do you know it? Because you were born there. Or because the number of your days is great. Have you entered the treasure of snow? Or have you seen the treasure of hail? It means hail has treasures. <laughs> Which are reserved for the time of trouble. For the day of battle and war. Have you seen the things that... Let me go into that. By what way is light diffused? Or the east wind scattered over the earth? Who has divided a channel for the overflowing water? Overflowing water? Or a part of the thunderbolts? To cause it to rain on a land where there is no one. A wilderness in which there is no man. To satisfy the desolate waste. To cause to spring forth the growth of tender grass. As the rain a feather. Or who has begotten the drops of dews. From whose womb comes the ice. And the frost of heaven who gives birth. Next verse. Let's read it together. Everyone want to ready go. Next verse. One, two, three, go. Orient. One, two, ready, go. Mazaroth in season. Next verse. Do you know the ordinances of heavens? Can you set their dominions over the earth? Do you see that there are ordinances? This is a teaching on its own. There are ordinances in heaven that set dominion on the earth. It means that every man who participates in the ordinances of heaven would set dominion on the earth. One of the ordinances in heaven is thanksgiving. Thanksgiving establishes kingdoms and set dominions. Go and study this thing. If I have time, I'll teach on it next year. Please, PD, write this down. I want to teach on this next year as a church. The ordinances of heaven and how the ordinances of heaven helps you to set dominions in the areas God has called you to be. The ordinances of heaven. The ordinances of heaven. Giving is an ordinance of heaven. Thanksgiving is an ordinance of heaven. Declaration is an ordinance of heaven. Worship is an ordinance of heaven. Honor is a protocol. Is an ordinance of heaven. There are ordinances in heaven which are standards. There are things you do that sets dominions on the earth. Let's keep going. Verse 34. One, two, ready, read. Can you lift up your voices to the clouds that an abundance of water may cover? Can you send out lightnings that may go and say to you, here we come. Next verse. Who has put wisdom in the mind? Who has given understanding to the earth? Next verse. Who can number the clouds by wisdom? Who can pour out the bottles of heaven? Next verse. Oh, 
locked in the imagine just we're going to continue it imagine god is having this conversation with um job and he's just walking around job just talking let's continue reading one two ready go one two ready go who provides food for the ravens when it's young ones cry to god who wanders about to for lack of food next verse do you know the time where the wild mountains goats bear youngs can you mark their deer's gives birth can you mark <laughs> one two ready go can you number the mouths that they fulfill or do they know the time when they bear young next verse they bow down they bring forth their youngs they deliver their offspring next verse they are grown healthy they've departed and now return to them next verse who set the wild donkey free who losing the bounds next verse whose home have i made the wilderness and the barren land is dwelling next verse next verse Can you bind the wild ox in Deprived her of wisdom and did not endow her with understanding. <laughs> wow. Have you given the horse strength? Have you clothed his neck with thunder? Have you frightened him like a locust? His majestic. He gallops into the. Trumpets are sound. He says, Ah, oh, the thunders of captains and shoutings. Does the eagle mount up your command and make his nest on high? eyes observe from afar its young ones suck up blood moreover the Lord answered Job and said shall the one who contend with the almighty correct him who rebukes God let him answer it and Job answered and said to the Lord behold what shall I answer you I lay my hand you know what he did? Firm. It means what? Job said what? At this point, I rest my case. How do I answer you? How? This is the God of the Ecclesia. This is the God of the chosen people. This is our this is your God this is my God can we know this God we serve this is our God do you see that you have faith faith is believing in the God that is able and I close with this scripture 
Paul then says in Ephesians 3.20 He says now unto him In fact, the starting of that text, in the way I checked it many months and years ago, the way it was written in Hebrew, it's actually put out like this in the translation of it. Now I surrender, finally, that God is able. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly. All that you can ask or think according to what what's that power the power there is your faith empowered by the Holy Ghost remember I told you that your faith is not alone your faith is hanged on the Holy Ghost according to the power that is at work within you meaning that the power that is at work within you is the Holy Ghost and your faith and in partnership with the Holy Ghost in partnership with your faith nothing shall be possible for you you must never think of impossible things you must never have a mindset that is not possible you must never think in your life that you are not caught out for certain things you must see life as possibilities the angel came to the Mary it says with man it's not possible but with God nothing it says how shall these things be it says the Holy Ghost did you see that there the Holy Ghost the Holy Ghost. That's what we see here in Ephesians 3.20 again. The Holy Ghost. The power at work within us. All things are possible to them that believe. All things. We're going to declare this scripture three times and you're going to shout it loud. This Ephesians 3.20. This is the scripture I want to leave with you as a people as we enter into the year 2023. Now unto him finally I surrender is able to do exceedingly abundantly all above all you could ask or think according to the power that work in you, you say God is able to do just what He says He will do. He's gonna fulfill, He's gonna fulfill every promise to me. Don't give up on God, don't give up on God. Cause he won't give up He's able We're going to close with that on break But we're going to script that scripture together Ephesians 3.20 We'll scream it three times And then we'll sing that song And we close Are you ready for the second session? Yeah. Did you get something? Yeah. Do you have faith? Somebody roar it. I have faith. <laughs> Tap five people around you. Now I'm ready to use my faith. <laughs> Tell five people I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. Ready for the scripture? Do you know why Jesus got before the tomb of Lazarus and did not say, Lazarus, come forth? It is a Lazarus, bros, lay, bros hell, hey bro, hey G, come forth. Talk to me. <laughs> Lazarus, wouldn't you come forth? Wouldn't you come out? On the last day of the feast, Jesus cried out with a loud voice. 
with a loud. If any man thirsts, listen. There are some things. It's a loud voice. It's a roar. Because what happens sometimes in that moment, your soul and your spirit connects to respond. Yeah. Your soul and your spirit connects to respond. It goes before the tomb of Lazarus. It, is Lazarus. it says, Lazarus, come out. That's how you are going to scream this one. Let that scripture drop. You know how you take tablets? When you swallow, you know. Ephesians 3.20, it don't enter. This one, this word has entered. Are you ready? Are you ready? The new Akura, are you ready? At a count of three. One, two, three, go. Now it's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, far above all that I can ask or think according to the power that is at work within me. One, two, three, go. Now I want to hear who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly. For the last time. According to the path that work out in you, in you, everybody say God is able to do just what he said. We're greatly blessed by today's message because God still has so much He wants to share with you. So stay connected every week to experience uplifting and life-changing moments in His presence.